The goal of most equilibrium problems is going to be trying to figure out how much of each chemical you have at equilibrium. So for example, here is a reaction where the Kp value is not really, really big, it's not really, really small. Kp is 0.15, so we know we're going to have a lot of both reactants and products at equilibrium. We start a reaction with 0.2 bar of both B and C. And we want to calculate all of the equilibrium pressures. The key to these types of equilibrium problems is to set up an ice chart. So the ice chart has the reaction written across the top. And then down the side you have three rows, I, C, E. I stands for initial, C is change, E is equilibrium. If we're dealing with a Kp, then the units we plug into the ice chart will be bar or atmosphere. If we're dealing with a Kc, then we would use units of molarity. This problem tells us we start with the initial pressure of B is 0 0.2 and the initial pressure of C was 0 0.2. And that's all the problem tells us, which means we didn't start with any A. We had no A in this reaction. We only had B and C. So that value is a zero. And zero is the smallest pressure or the smallest concentration you can have because there's no such thing as a negative pressure or a negative concentration. So we know that the change in chemical A has to increase. If the left-hand side is increasing, the right-hand side must decrease. We can never have a reaction where both the left and the right sides increase or both decrease. One side gets bigger as the chemicals react, and one side is going to get smaller. How much they react is dependent on the stoichiometry, which you get from the coefficients. The coefficients are a 2 to 1 to 1 ratio in this example. So we don't know exactly right at this point how much C is going to react, but let's call it one unit of X based on the coefficient being a 1. Chemical B has exactly the same coefficient, so it will also react away one unit of X. But chemical B's coefficient is a 2, so it's going to increase by two units of X. We control the initial amounts in the lab. The chemicals control the change based on the stoichiometry. And the equilibrium is found simply by adding down each column. For gas A, 0 plus 2X gives us 2X. Pressure of B at equilibrium, add down the column, 0.2 minus X and chemical C is also 0.2 minus X. Now what we have to do is solve this ice chart using the given value of the equilibrium constant which was 0 0.15. So the equilibrium constant 0 0.15 we know based on this reaction that this will be the pressure of B products divided by reactants again, times the pressure of C, divided by the pressure of A, which has to be squared because of that coefficient 2. And now we just substitute in according to the ice chart. The ice chart tells us the pressure of B at equilibrium is 0 0.2 minus X. The pressure of C at equilibrium is also 0 0.2 minus X and the pressure of A at equilibrium is 2x, and we still have to square that. This is an equation that we can solve for x. 0 0.15 is equal to 0.2 minus x, quantity squared, divided by 2x, quantity squared. There are a couple of ways that we could solve this equation. One way is the quadratic formula, or if you recognize 
you have a square in the numerator and a square in the denominator, you can simplify the math by taking the square root of both sides. This is an example of a perfect square. So if I do this, square root of 0 0.15 is 0 0.3873. The square root of the right hand side is 0.2 minus x divided by 2x. If I cross multiply, bring all my x's to one side, all my numbers to the other side, I'll get an answer for x, 0 0.113. The question was, what are all the equilibrium pressures? So I take this 0 0.113 and substitute it back into the equilibrium row of the ice chart to give me all of my answers. Pressure of A is 2 times x. 2 times 0.113 is 0.226. The pressure of chemical B was 0.2 minus x, which is 0 0.087. And the pressure of C was also the same as the pressure of B, 0 0.087 bar.